Happy Tuesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to talk to you today about Kenneth Hagin. I'm going to tell you some things about Kenneth Hagin, at least some things that you've never heard before. I know what happened to him after he died. I know. Because the Lord showed me. Hmm? You want to hear about this? I mean, I know. God gave me a vision. Now, I've had visions before. Every one of them has been right on. And I am quite sure this one is too. I mean, with all my heart, I know that I had the it was the right vision. I'm going to share it with you. I've never, I've never shared it publicly. I've mentioned it a couple times in, in services and at funerals, but I want to share what happened to Kenneth Hagin after he died. Hmm? How many, some of you people have probably been in his meetings. I know we went to school there. We went to school there. Actually, I'll show you some pictures. I'll show you some pictures. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. <clears throat> call me if you need your prayers answered today. Make sure you call me if you did your offerings and donations yesterday or today because I want to speak God's word for word blessing over you. Amen. And if you need something, you know where to get it. Everybody knows where to get what they need from the Lord. They call this number and I help them. I will combine my faith with yours and we will get you what you need. Glory to God. Isn't it wonderful there's a number to call? When Mary and I were struggling so much with our finances and we had so many financial problems, we had nobody to talk to. That's why I do what I do. Because everybody needs somebody to help them sometimes. Whatever's going on. Amen. So make sure you call me. And uh, I want to show you a picture. This is a picture of Kenneth Hagin with Mary. He is presenting her her diploma at Bible College. And here is a picture of me and he is presenting me with my diploma at Bible College in 1995. How wonderful. Now Kenneth Hagin is considered by people to be the father of the Word of Faith movement. Now, Abraham is what we call the father of faith. He's our spiritual father in the faith. Not our heavenly father, but our spiritual father in the faith. But Brother Hagen is, he is the father of the Word of Faith movement. He is the one who started the Word of Faith movement. Now, he's not the first person to ever preach the Word of Faith. The Apostle Paul did. Lots of people did. They wrote books on it, all kinds of stuff. But Brother Hagin was the one that God called in 1950. And God said, go teach my people faith. He asked God every day for revelation knowledge and the spirit of wisdom, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. I do the same thing. I've done it for 25 years. Where do you think all my books have come from? They've come from revelation and knowledge that God has given me. Well, he, he did the same thing. He asked God for revelation knowledge for two years, and God spoke to him and said, go teach my people faith. Well, he didn't realize that he was going to have to live by faith while he was doing that. You know, I talk about people. I do some book reviews. Some are good, some aren't so good. And I'm honest, when I talk, some people... If people say the wrong things or do the wrong things, or if they're off the track, I will tell you in a heartbeat, stay away from these people. Because everybody out there you see on TV is not to be followed by a long shot. Kenneth Hagin was somebody 
that God not only called him to teach, but anointed him to. It was an incredible anointing on his life. Now, I'm going to tell you some stories about Brother Hagin, and then what, I'm going to tell you what happened when he died. Well, years ago, sitting in a used car lot in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, I had been seeking the Lord for a while. I didn't know how to get saved, which is the problem of a lot of people. And somebody gave me some little booklets by Kenneth Hagin. And I read through one of them. I don't even remember which one it was. But on the back of that little book was the sinner's prayer. And I looked at that sinner's prayer. And I said, oh my goodness. I just, I just, I almost lost my breath. Oh my goodness. I said, that's how people get saved. And so I prayed the prayer. Right then and there, I prayed the prayer. And then I stood up. I said, Lord, I've walked with you a long time. Well, I've, I've walked without you a long time. If you will forgive me and accept me, I will serve you all my life. And I felt my chest just expand like somebody was pumping an air pump inside me. My chest just expanded and expanded and there was heat inside my chest. And then it went away. And I was born again. I made a deal with God. Lord, I've lived a horrible life. You probably did too. If you will accept me and forgive me, I will serve you the rest of my life. And I have. Been trying to. Well, I always said, if I ever meet Brother Hagen, I'm going to tell him I got saved reading the back of one of his little books. So the first week of orientation at Bible college, we got to meet the faculty. And so we all walked down this line, past all these tables, and all the faculty was sitting there. And there at the end of the table was Brother Hagen sitting there with his wife. And I came to Brother Hagen. And I said, Brother Hagen, I got saved in a used car lot in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, reading the back of one of your little books. And he looked up at me and he goes, praise God. That's all he said. That was all I needed. That's all I needed to hear from him. And I went on. That I went on. And so I did get to tell him face to face. Well, one day in ch after church, Mary wanted to get her picture taken because she was going to work in the bookstore. They told us to get involved in the church, so we did. While we were students there, you know, just to learn how the church operates and everything. So Mary, one of the, we worked in the nursery and uh, Mary also wanted to work in the bookstore. She liked to, that. So she had to get a picture taken and get an ID card. Well, we went to the other end of the church after the service and she was over in line to get her picture taken. I was standing there leaning against the wall. And all of a sudden, I felt this tingling in my body. And it was like a low voltage electricity. And it started getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Until it really got strong. And I looked up to my right. And here comes Brother Hagen. And he's walking down the hallway with two bodyguards. They had to have bodyguards for him. Because you know there's crazy people out there. And he came down. And I'm telling you, by the time he got to me, it was just incredible. The electricity going through me. And he stopped and he turned to me. I said, good morning, Brother Hagen. I put out my hand. And he walked over to me and shook hands with me. He said, good morning. And he turned around and walked away. And the further away he got, the less the electricity was affecting me. And he went around the corner into the parking garage. The Lord showed me how anointed he was. Now, I've been around him other times. I did not feel that. 
But God gave me a, a, a personal look at just how anointed that man was. That's incredible. That's incredible. Well, Brother Hagen, a few years after we left Bible college, Brother Hagen passed away. He went to be with the Lord. And a few years later, I was just, I don't even remember what I was doing. Now, I've had visions before. And the visions have always been with the Lord wanting to tell me something. And to show me something. Well, this vision that I got this time was I got a vision of heaven. I wasn't there. It was a vision. I mean, I'm wide awake and I'm seeing into the spiritual realm. And here is this huge crowd of people inside the gate of heaven. And I'm watching this whole scene, like I'm watching a video or something, but like it's like I'm there in person and I'm just watching all these people and I look over and here comes Brother Hagin. And as he walks through the gate into heaven, all these people, thousands of them, start to clap. Just a huge, it got to be a roar. It's like a crowd at a football game. All these people just clapping and showing appreciation and love for Brother Hagin. And the vision stopped. I said, oh my goodness, Lord. That's, it. That's incredible. That's what happened to Brother Hagin after he died. And the Lord spoke to me in an audible voice. And he said, the same thing is going to happen to you. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you something, folks. I protect that. I protect those words. I will never be deceived to get off the track. I want that for my life. What a glorious time to walk and that's going to happen to everybody who crosses over when you cross over all your friends and family and relatives and the people that you've made a difference in their lives who have gone before you are going to be standing there clapping when you come through and you're going to feel the love i could feel the love for brother higgins when he walked through there. Lord also showed me a vision one time of after my mother died. My brother had died a couple years before she did. And the Lord showed me a vision of her arriving in heaven and my brother being there to meet her. Your loved ones are going to be there for you. They're going to be there to meet you. They're going to be clapping and hugging and Oh my goodness, it's just going to be just beyond. I, I can't even describe the love I could feel that these people had for Brother Hagen and, and the appreciation. I mean, he's respond. He's been, that man is responsible for millions and millions of people being saved and healed and made and, and caused to live in abundance. Him, he's responsible for that. He's going to receive the reward for it. And it's going to start when he walks through the gates. You call me today if there's something you need. If you need prayers answered, you need to be healed, you need to be blessed. Whatever it is you need, you call me. We'll get it done for you. Through the power in the name of Jesus. That same power that brought Brother Hagen through the gates is going to take care of you.